uh, obviously 3.7%, um, it fits very much the consensus view, up from 3.5%, and it's raising questions as to uh, a cycle of inflation trending upwards in South Africa. Yes, yeah, so Larata, as you mentioned, the the 0.4% monthly increase was driven primarily by higher food, transport costs and also the miscellaneous component mm -hmm. of the CPI basket. In terms of food inflation, we had a rise um, on a monthly basis and on an annual basis. And that is partly seasonal and partly due to also coming off a lower base. And of course, we've got the higher global prices that are s slowly beginning to feed through. Um, that we saw an increase in the food prices was not right. too much of a shock to analysts as analysts have been expecting an increase right. since about September last year um, but that they are quite broad based did come as a slight surprise. The transport sector was due primarily to the 29 cents per litre rise in the right. petrol price that we had in January so that was also in line with expectations. Just in terms of what we can expect going forward um, you know internationally there's a threat of uh, food prices spiking even further than what we've already seen and that being a significant component of what's going to create global inflation. So on a global pi global picture with um, emerging markets in particular, the threat of food and fuel inflation really has um, risen in the last few months and, and fears, fears have really um, increased. The South African story is slightly unique in that offsetting these pressures we've had the past RAND strength and um, excess supply, particularly in the food markets. So that's been offsetting the pressures we've had. Going forward at RMB we expect to see a gradual increase in inflation over the course of the next few months. Um, driven by the food and fuel mm -hmm. components and then to pick up a bit more strongly in the second mm -hmm. half of the year. So while the food price story is rising and we've seen the pressures coming mm -hmm. through, it is fairly moderate. Yeah. The risk of course is that we have some sort of external shock or that they come through much stronger than anticipated and that would really um, lead to an increase in, in inflationary pressures. I mean obviously you mentioned the strong rand and when we saw petrol prices increase in the last month uh, it mitigated against uh, real shocks into the, into, into the system. The rand has uh, weakened somewhat, it's no longer in the six rands range, it's now above seven and um, with the sense that inflationary pressures are continuing it's a question as to how the Reserve Bank is going to act and the view is we might see a rate hike sooner than expected, certainly in the last quarter. Yes, well the RMB House view is for the RAND to actually remain fairly strong over the course of the next year, ending at around 7 to the dollar. Um, but of course we are seeing that the risks are becoming stronger, more prominent, um, particularly over the last few weeks. Our view is that the Reserve Bank is going to keep rates on hold until the f first quarter of next mm -hmm. year. The market, um, as you mentioned, has begun pricing in and expectations have shifted to hiking to, st to begin um, as, as early in the case of the farm market of September this mm -hmm. year, um, the latest Reuters economy to survey um, showed that it's, it's uh, uh, just at the end of this year, the fourth quarter of this year. But we think that the Saab views the risks to the inflation outlook as we do is largely exogenous. We spoke mm -hmm. about the food and the fuel mm -hmm. issues. They are primarily external, coming from global issues as opposed to South Africa specific mm -hmm. issues. So we think that they would really have to see some robust strength on mm -hmm. the growth front coming through, in particular higher private sector mm -hmm. fixed investment, you know, really starting right. to show some strong growth before um, beginning the tightening. Okay, the impact on the investment picture, I mean, we do know that um, um, uh, bonds were, have been trading in the region of 8.5%, you don't have to speak to those numbers, mm -hmm. but with a weakening South African round, with these pervasive inflationary threats, how does it make uh, investors view the attractiveness of South African assets? Well, as we've seen, you know, even though there has been a slowdown in bond and equity flows in January in particular into South Africa, there's by no means um, a 
a massive deterioration in, in investor sentiment. I think the global story is one of uncertainty. You know, mm. we're seeing a mixture of good growth figures, bad growth figures, and, and it's creating a bit of uncertainty. But for the moment, um, emerging market sentiment remains strong and investors seem to be viewing South Africa as a favourable destination. Alright, now let's talk about retail sales figures which are due out later on today. In America, um, you know, they've risen just by about 0.3%, which was not spectacular, mm -hmm. um, but there are reasons for it, the snow and all sorts of other issues. In South Africa, are we likely to have resonance with the situation that we've just seen come out of America? You know, as is the story with inflation, I think the dynamics in South Africa are very different to America, so we can't compare them directly. We do expect to see a moderation, however, in retail sales in December from 7.8% in November, year mm -hmm. over year, um, to around 5.1% in December. But this is partly due to base effect. You know, we really are coming off of um, off a good base, so the, the moderation um, is, is nothing to panic about yet. But in the near term, the pressures that we're seeing from higher food and transport mm -hmm. prices are likely to put pressure on consumers' wallets, mm -hmm. which will mean that they, they will have less to, for discretionary expenditure. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that does pose a risk to retail sales going forward. We've had strong retail sales over the past few months. The consumers have really been aided by the lower inflation and interest rates mm -hmm. and, of course, the strong wage growth so that has boosted consumer spending and if you look at the drivers of GDP it really is the consumer that's leading the recovery mm -hmm. we do think however that um, as we approach sort of the middle of the year yeah. that this is going to begin moderating as as you know consumers start feeling the pinch and, and consumers higher start prices. holding back mm. a little bit more Okay, thanks so much to you, Laura Marie from Rand Merchant Bank, for just talking us through the CPI figures and what we could see by way of trends with retail sales going forward.